Bridge rectifiers. I've done quite a few videos on them, especially using them to convert AC to DC for a treadmill motor power supply. And I'm still getting lots of questions. And the most recent question was, is there an elegant way to connect wires to this bigger spade on this bigger bridge rectifier? And the answer is yes, there is. And let me show you how I do it. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So first let's talk about these two bridge rectifiers. Obviously besides size, there is a massive difference between them. This unit is what is recommended by most treadmill motor power supply build videos on YouTube and it's garbage. This is the one that I recommend and the reason for that is because of amperage. This is rated, I believe, at 50 amps, and this is rated at 100 amps. Now, none of these treadmill motors draw more than 50 amps, so why can't we just simply use this? The simple answer is that the higher the amperage rating, the cooler it's going to run, and the less likely it is to fail. So that amperage rating is max amps, not continuous amps. And more often than not, a general good rule of thumb is continuous amps is half of max amps. If this is rated at 50 amps and you have a 25 amp motor, if that motor is drawing max amps for any length of time, you are at the top limit of continuous use on this bridge rectifier. On this one, we're not even close and it's going to continue to work and it's going to work flawlessly. Now, why does it matter? These are cheap. This is a little more expensive. If this fails, I will just get another one of these. Problem is, if this fails, oftentimes it'll burn up your power supply at the same time. Because when they fail, oftentimes they create a direct short. I'll get off my soapbox. I have other videos talking about that exact thing. Don't use this. Use this. But oftentimes, if you've seen any of my videos, I'm always using this here on the bench. And why is that? Spade connectors. I can easily connect and disconnect wires to this for bench top setups. Now, on the bench, you're likely not to be drawing max amps because there's not resistance. There's not a spindle or a drum or some other thing being turned by the motor. And because of that, typically we're not going to draw a significant amount of amps. So I can get away with using this on the bench. But all of my power supplies that are running my shop equipment have this inside. So if I unplug this spade, and now we come back here with our wire, we can't connect that. That is a massive terminal, and this quick connect is not gonna fit. So that brings me back to my original question. Someone left a comment, they're like, is there an elegant way to make our connections to this bridge rectifier? And there is, and I believe I've shown how I do it in a previous video. Problem is, I've got so many videos on similar topics, I don't remember which one. And for you to watch all of my videos relating to treadmill motors and power supplies just to get this one nugget seems like a lot of effort. So I decided to show you what I do to easily and elegantly make connections to a big bridge rectifier just like this. First and foremost, how's it wired? Well, if I pick up the bridge rectifier I had before, we have AC and DC, and it's labeled. We've got AC there and a positive there. And it's diagonal. It's AC here, AC here, positive DC on this terminal, negative DC on this terminal. This one doesn't wire the same. And if you wire it that way, you're going to have problems. This one is labeled. If we look right there, you can actually vaguely see the markings. This has a little squiggly line, that has a little squiggly line, and that is the AC input. And then down here, we have a positive right there next to that terminal, and next to this terminal, we have a negative. And so that tells us that the AC current comes in on these two terminals, and this is our positive DC terminal, and this is our negative DC terminal. So when we wire these up, you need to solder wires to these terminals. At least that's the way that I do it. And then you can crimp quick connects to the end of the wires. So as an example, I have four wires here. 
and each one is a different color, and that is by design. If you watch any of my videos, and really you should go watch some of my videos, they're pretty good. I've got a lot of information on power supplies and electrical things. I've got car information. There's a lot of good stuff out there, but this isn't an ad for my channel. If you watch some of my videos on building power supplies and power supply mistakes, one thing that I constantly harp on is different colored wires. I get a lot of people send me emails saying my system's not working correctly, and they'll send me pictures of how they have it wired up. And they'll have every single wire coming out of their rectifier the same color. And not only does that make it hard to follow what's going where, it also makes it hard to troubleshoot in the future. Let's say two, three years down the road, you now have to go in and fix something. If the wires are correctly labeled with the correct color, you know exactly what's going on. If they're all the same color, you have to go back and re-educate yourself. You have to watch my videos all over again. Hey. Maybe that's a good way to get people to watch my videos. No, no, not a good option. What you need to do is use the correct colors. So what I have here is red. That's gonna be our positive for DC. I have black, that's gonna be our negative for DC. Now black is also used on AC. But for this application, because I do have DC and AC, I am using blue to represent the hot for the AC. And that is also a very common color for AC wiring. And white is the neutral for AC. So we have these four wires, they've been stripped. And what we're gonna do is we are going to solder them to these terminals, and then we're simply gonna cover it with heat shrink tape. It's a really simple way to make the connections and have a good quality setup. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind. AC doesn't require as big of gauge a wire as DC does for the same application. So you can get away with slightly smaller wires on the AC side, but you cannot skimp on the DC side. The alternating nature of AC current allows for smaller wires and less heat buildup. But on the DC side, because it's constant, bigger wires for reduced resistance and better electrical flow. My recommendation is 16 gauge is a minimum. 14 gauge is better, especially on the AC side. And for the DC side, this is actually 12 gauge. The bigger the wire, the better off you're gonna be. So how are we gonna solder this? Well, like me, you probably have a soldering iron. The problem is this terminal is so big that trying to use this to heat this terminal is not gonna get it up to temperature or it's gonna take a really long time. When you're soldering something, what you wanna do is heat what's getting soldered, not heat the solder. So I see this as a common mistake. A person will have a soldering iron and they'll melt the solder on the tip of the soldering iron and then dab the solder onto whatever they're trying to solder and that will never work. Solder sticks to hot metal. Solder does not stick to cold metal. So the trick, if I was going to be tinning these wires, which means to coat them in solder, I would put the soldering iron underneath the wire, and then when the wire comes up to temperature, apply the solder to the wire. Trying to do that with a large terminal like this is going to be extremely challenging because this terminal is going to absorb heat, and you're not going to get it heated very fast. The other issue is that that's a lot of heat that is now going to be transferred down into the electrical components. And electronics and heat don't play well together. The number one thing that causes electronics to fail is heat. So how do we get this hot enough to melt solder, which I believe is over 300 degrees, without overheating this? Well, the answer is a butane torch and a pair of vice grips. Now, the torch totally makes sense because that's where we're going to get enough heat to solder onto these terminals. But what are the vice grips for? Well, they are going to protect this component from getting overheated. We're going to use these vice grips as a heat sink. Now, this is a pair of needle nose vice grips, and I prefer them because of their nice long nose. But if you've got just regular vice grips, you can use them the same because what's going to happen is... We're going to take and clip the vice grips at the very base of the terminal. 
And as heat is applied here, where we apply the heat will be the hottest, and then the heat will begin to radiate down through the metal. And when it gets to the vice grips, the vice grips will begin to get warm instead of letting the heat continue down into the component. So this is the easiest way to protect this bridge rectifier. So let's see about hooking this up. So we know that this is the positive, and we know that I am pretty rigid about my coloring. So if this is the positive, it's gonna get a red wire. So I'm gonna take and put this in here, and then I'm gonna bend it so that it is dangling down, and now we have the wire on the terminal. Then I'm gonna fire up the torch. Now again, we want to heat the terminal, not the solder. If you put flame directly to the solder, it's gonna burn, and we don't want that. It's gonna put out toxic fumes that nobody needs to be breathing. So we are gonna apply our heat right there and get all this hot enough to apply the solder. I'm gonna come in on occasion and test it. All right. We now have a nicely soldered joint and you can actually come in behind and do the same thing down here and put solder on the backside if you so choose. I'm gonna go ahead and solder up all four of these, and then once I do that, we'll look at the heat shrink tubing. So there we are, all soldered up. We've got the blue and the white going to the AC terminals. We've got the black and the red going to their corresponding DC terminals. This is just basic heat shrink tubing. You can get it at Harbor Freight. This is the marine grade, and it's what I prefer because it's got kind of a hot glue inside. So when you put heat to it, it causes that glue to liquefy and it helps seal the connection from moisture and those kind of things. So quarter inch is the size that I decided to go with. And the reason I did that, I went with the smallest heat shrink tubing that I could fit over these terminals so that we would have as close to a tight seal around the wires. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these in half and then slide them down into place. Now you wanna make sure that the terminals are no longer hot, otherwise this heat shrink tubing is gonna to start to shrink prematurely. But as you can see, that quarter inch tubing is a little bit of a snug fit, which is exactly what we want. We want it to be as small as we can possibly get it to begin with. From there, it's just as simple as coming in with your heat gun of choice. The result is a very, very clean install. These wires are permanently affixed to this bridge rectifier and we can easily attach quick connectors to the end for easy, simple wiring and easy, simple installation. If you have any questions on this or anything else that you've seen in any of my videos, please don't hesitate to either shoot me an email through my website or put a comment down in the comment section. It was contact from you, the viewer, that resulted in this video. And maybe if you have a question, it will end up as a future video. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.